Okay, so here I'm going to talk through um, using uh, views to make, make figures. So I'm going to be talking about the views application rather than using views as a Python library, which we often do as well. Um, so what we're going to be doing is talking through how we might uh, reproduce and perhaps do a little bit differently um, a figure like this. So this is from Sol's study. So thanks Sol for allowing me to, to talk through how we might um, alter your, your figure using views and perhaps try and do a few of the, the things a little bit differently. Okay, so this is where we, where we kind of want to end up, is a, a figure with, with two panels like this, um, one showing these mean and standard errors and one showing a scatter plot of, of two conditions against each other. Okay, so the first thing is to go into to views. So when you run views, this is what, what you see. Uh, so the most important things are, so this center region here is your um, page, you know, the, the canvas or the, <clears throat> the, um, where the figure will be, will be made. Um, over here on the right is, this is a list of what views calls data sets. So we'll talk more about what a data set is, but these are the things that you actually end up end up going into providing the data in your figures. Over here on the right, we have the um, structure of the figure. So up here we have a tree that has a, a hierarchy of figure elements. So we've got a document, that document has a single page, that page at the moment has a single graph, at the moment that graph has two axes. So what we'll be doing is using this tree to build up the structure of, of the figure. Down below we have another pane called properties and what this is is for the particular elements of the figure. So here for example the axis you have a bunch of, um, of properties that have different um, aspects that you can change. So this is for an axis, these properties will be different for other types of figure elements. Down the bottom here we have a, a formatting pane. So now here we have, again for the axis, we have some different things about the appearance of the figure that we can change. Things like the line, the axis label, and so on. So we'll see these in action as, as we go. Okay, so this is when you first run views, you get just this default figure with a single graph. So the first thing, let's just save it. Um, so these get saved as a file with the .vsz extension. All right, so now let's just delete the graph that's automatically there. So now we've started off with this, with this blank page. So now the first thing we're going to do is to work out the structure of the figure. So as you can see here, what we've got is two separate figures within the one figure or two panels within the one figure. So the way we build up this structure in views is to insert a grid. So now we've got a grid within our page and here we want there to be one row of our grid and two columns. So this is going to give us this one row, two columns structure. Okay. Now within each of these Within this grid, we want to make two um, figures. So these are called graphs in views. So now we add a graph and we add another graph. Okay, so now you can see we've got our, our page that has a grid of two graphs and our two graphs here. All right, so now let's start altering some of our formatting. So the page, so we need to set the, the size of our figure. Um, so you've heard me go on about this before, but it's really important to think about these things in terms of their physical size. So typically for a figure, it'll either be eight centimeters wide or 16 centimeters wide. So that will be one column or two columns of, of a journal. So here let's set it to 16. And now the, the height is usually something that's going to depend on your um, figures. So we'll probably alter this later, but for now let's just set it to something like 12. Okay, so now we've got, got our page, we've got our grid, 
So you can see that we've got some margins on our grid. So let's just expand those out a little bit. And you can start to see the, the structure of, of our figure. Okay, so just save it there. All right, so now if we go back to the figures. So let's do this right one first, because that's probably an easier one to do. So all right, so what we've got here is a scatter plot of the individual data points from these two different um, conditions. So now what we want to do is select our graph 2, this is the one on the right, and now we want to add a, a type called XY. So XY is kind of the really the, the workhorse of the, the figures in views. So you can use an XY to do, do most of the kind of figures we, we will create. Okay, so now we've added an X, XY instance. So you can see that it has all these different properties. So now is where we need to start thinking about how to get our data into, into views. So the key thing to be aware of in views is that um, there are, firstly, there are multiple ways of getting data into it. We'll just consider one, which is probably the, the simplest, and that's if you have an Excel file or something like this. So in views, what we're interested in is really um, columns of data. So whatever you want to be able to um, map to a property in views, so something like for a scatter plot, you want to have a, a, a list of X values, a list of Y values. So those different things are going to be different columns in your um, Excel file that you then import into views. So here, for example, so this is some, some data from Sols. Um, you can ignore these ones A through F. So uh, just Sol for you. Um, we'll talk, cover this later, but when we look at computing standard errors, um, for these within subjects designs, we want to compute standard errors a little bit differently to how you, how you would normally do it. So we'll, we'll come back to that. The key ones are here. So we've got these four columns that have the data for the weak visual, weak audio condition, the weak visual reference audio, the strong visual reference audio, and the strong visual strong audio. Here we've got some other data points. So these are the X values for our weak visual. Here are the means for the weak visuals. And here is a special column called plus minus. Whenever it appears to the right of another column, these get associated with that column as a measure of the error. So here what we're saying is that, all right, create a data set called WVN means. It has this value here, but it also has attached to it this error value. Okay, so we'll see that in practice. And we've got the same for strong visual, pair of X values, pair of means with their associated error. Okay, so from Excel, we can export this as a CSV file. And then in views, we can go data, import. We want to import a CSV file. We can browse, load our CSV file. And it gives us a bit of a preview of what's contained in that file. Um, okay, the first thing we want to set is that our data is going in columns. Okay, so we can press import. You can see that we have a bunch of data that's been imported that corresponds to our um, data file. Okay, so a few of these we, we don't need. So let's just go through and delete those. Uh, so we don't need these. Actually, yes, we do. Now let's just keep them all in just to make things more straightforward. Okay, so now if we have our XY, now we want to tell it what the X data is. So if we go back to Sol's figure, we can see that the X data is going to correspond to the uh, weak visual condition. So we can map our data set, the weak video reference audio condition. We'll map that to the X of our scatter plot. So the Y is going to be our strong visual condition. So we can map our strong video reference audio to our Y. 
Okay, and now you can start to see there's, there's some data now. So what we're going to do first is just concentrate on getting the data into the, the program. We'll worry about the formatting and making it look nice um, once we've got all the data together. Okay, so that's our the starting point for our uh, scatter plot. Okay, so now let's go to the other figure. So here what we want is um, essentially two XYs. So we want to represent the data from the, um, the weak visual condition and the data from the strong visual condition. Okay, so now what we can do is insert an XY that's going to be for the weak. So our X data is going to be given by the weak visual um, X data set. Our Y data is going to be given by the weak visual means. And so now we can see our data has, has appeared. All right, now we want to do the same thing, but now for our strong visual. So we've got our strong visual X and our strong visual means. And so now we have the data from that as well. Okay, so now let's save it. All right, so now we've got our, the key components of our figures um, in, or our, the data for the figures into, into the program. So now we can go and start thinking about, well, how can we make these uh, look, look nice? All right, so one of the first things that we wanna do is, so for this scatter plot, what we wanna do is set the, this property called the aspect ratio. So we want this to be set to one. So what that means is that the width and height will always be equal. So why this is a good thing is it because for a scatter plot like this, it makes a unity to be along, along the a diagonal line. So that's nice for these sorts of figures. Okay, so now let's start doing some of the formatting. So there are two ways you can do this. So for each, as we saw, for each element, there are a bunch of formatting options, but for things we want to apply to the whole figure, we can also use these styles. So what the styles are, uh, basically for all the different things, you can kind of set, set defaults. So let's start by setting some axis uh, defaults. Okay, actually now let's start with the font. So typically we won't want to use Times New Roman as our font. So Arial is a good, good default option. So let's set it to Arial and let's set the default size to be 10 point. All right, so you can see how the, the figures have all automatically updated. So now we've got things in the Arial font at 10 point because that was, we've altered the default style for our font. Okay, so as I said, let's go back to Axis. So there are a few things here. One thing I usually like to do is to um, offset them a little bit. So change the min and max positions. So it's a bit hard to see at the moment. We'll see it in a second. Basically what that does is stops them from intersecting at, at their intersection. Okay, so now a few things here. We don't really want axes on this other side, so we turn off auto mirror. Um, I usually like the ticks pointing outwards, so I usually turn on outer ticks. Okay, um, so I just should mention that these sort of default files you can save and have these apply to, to every figure you make. All right, so that one's okay. Axis label, Ariel, I usually make it about nine points rather than 10. Um, and I usually make the label offset a few points. So we'll see what effect that has soon. Tick labels, I usually put as an eight point. Um, yep. Minor ticks I usually hide by default. They make them look a little bit ugly, I find. Okay, so that's probably it. Those are the grid lines which we don't we don't use. All right, so how about the graph? Um, we don't usually want this box around the graph, so we just hide the 
hide the border. Okay, so you can start to see that our, our graphs are looking a lot, lot nicer already. So by changing these defaults, we've started to, to make the appearance look a little bit, a little bit neater. Okay, so now let's go in and start changing some of the, the aspects for each individual figure. Okay, so for this one, the first thing we want to do is make sure that the two axes uh, have the same ranges. Okay, so we go into our graph, the x-axis, so these are automatically derived, but let's do them manually. So let's say with, say, minimum of minus 14 and a maximum of, say, 5. All right, and now we want to do the same thing for the y-axis. A minimum of minus 14, maximum of 5. Okay, so now you can start to see that we've got um, the same figure, figure ranges on the, on the two, axis ranges on the two axes. All right, so now let's start thinking about the points themselves. So we can click on those to get to their x, y. Uh, so the first thing is that we don't want the lines don't really make any sense. It doesn't make sense to join consecutive participants. So we just go to the line and we hide that. Okay, so now we're at the individual points. Um, so now the the color it doesn't we don't really need them to be colored. So let's set the fill of the marker color to be black. So now we get our points like this. So now for scatter spots like this, it makes it difficult to interpret or to realize when points are overlapping. So what we probably want to do is make them partially transparent. Okay, so now here you can you can tell that you know there are multiple points overlapping here um, and that looks looks quite nice. Okay, so one other thing we might want to do in this figure is to add a unity line. So to do that we insert a shape and we'll add a line, okay? And the line we're going to specify by point to point. So the x, the starting x position is minus 14. Starting y position is minus 14. The end x position is 5. And y position is 5. Okay, so importantly we're not specifying these in what are term relative for the figure, we're specifying in terms of the axes. So what relative means is that this is 0, 0, this is 1, 1, whereas axes mode, you specify them in the, in the units of the axis. Okay, so now we've got our unity line. We might want to make that a little bit distinguished. So we might have them, say, dashed. All right, so now we've got our, our dashed unity line there. Let's just save where we are. All right, so what else do we need to make this figure look reasonable? So these axes need some labels. So again, you just click on the axis, find the property called label. Um, here, let's just call them, so this will need some finessing, but let's just call this um, weak and one response. Okay, so you can see it appears there. I do the same thing on the y-axis, strong one response. All right, so that figure's looking pretty reasonable for the moment. So now let's concentrate on this other one. Okay, so now what's the, the first thing we want to do is probably, let's set the axis ranges again. So now for this x-axis, now we've got these ticks intermediate locations that don't really make sense. So this is really categorical. So let's set the tick, um, major ticks, I have this option called manual ticks. So let's, we can set that as um, the three different values. So what do we have? We have 65, 70, 2.5, and 80. Okay, so now you can see that we only have the ticks at the three um, category levels. Now let's set the axis range. So I normally put it a little bit below the limit, so 62.5 say, and 82.5. Alright, so now you can see our 
different conditions there. Um, so now let's focus on the points themselves. So again, colors probably bits of superfluous here. So let's set the color to be black. Now, actually, now let's set the overall color to be black. So it cycle goes through the other things as well. Now what I tend to do is to have, what I like to do is have a black fill and with a white border. So you get some nice, let's make it a little bit wider. So you get some nice kind of distinction between the, the um, item and the error bar. Um, okay, so we'll do the same for the other one. We'll set its color to be black. And we'll go in and change the border to be white. All right. Okay, so now we need to have one of these be a different um, marker shape. So we can do that here. So we have this a circle. Uh, so let's make it a square for now. All right. And let's just make it a little bit bigger. So there's a bit of a subtlety here in that so your, your squares will be, have a, be using more ink, if you like, than the circles. So sometimes I make the squares a little bit smaller so that they kind of perceptually look about the same size as the, the circles. But we won't worry about that, that for now. Okay, so what else do we need? So these, we want to be able to identify these. So what we can do is add a key so here we're on the, the week. So let's just call this week visual. So these will probably need better labels. Strong visual. And now to be able to see that, we can insert a key. So you can think of this like a legend. Okay, so now you can see we've got our, our legend. We might move this a different spot and we might flip them around. Okay. So now let's set our label as well. So we can have something like sound level, db, spl. And our y axis, we have something like um, n1. And we can use some kind of latex y like commands. So we can have, um, put in mu, so to have this in um, this, these units, we can use these different uh, characters. All right, so we're starting to, to take shape. So what else might we need to do? So this figure is looking a bit awkwardly sized, so we might play around with resizing it. Do we want it to be the same aspect ratio? Maybe we do, so we can set the aspect ratio to one so that it matches its neighbor. Okay, so let's have a think about what else we can do. We can probably make the page not quite as tall and we can adjust some of the margins. Okay, um, this one, the key, the text is probably a bit big we put that down to about eight. Um, else? Okay, so one other thing is when you change these things, you can make those apply to, um, to other things. Let me just get that sorted. Okay, so I decided I can shift this bottom margin to the other graphs. So you can see how this one's changed as well. All right, so now we're starting to get somewhere. Still a bit too much here at the top. So can we, that doesn't help.
Okay, so that's that's starting to look look pretty reasonable. So this key is probably not ideal at the moment. Um, let's, uh, have it something like that. Um, but yeah, you can see the sorts of things you can play around with. Um, I might want to make this axis a little bit. That might be too much. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think that's starting to look look pretty good. Um, again, this key is probably could use some finessing, um, but anyway, that's the sort of thing you can play around with and try to get the the aesthetics that you want. So the last thing we probably want to do is so each graph we need to have a label, so we can insert a label, and so this one is going to be panel A, you can see we've got an A here, um, I don't usually make these bold, okay, so now we've got our, our panel A, i make that a touch bigger, yep. and now we can, we can copy this and paste it into our other graph, and change the A to a B. Okay, so with that, we might even center this. Probably looks not too bad. Bit of bit of wasted white space up the top here. So again, that's the sort of thing that can be can be tweaked. Um, so yeah, so here we've got a kind of a reasonable looking looking figure. I think um, there are a few other things we might might want to do. Um, one thing that I, I tend to do that makes things look a little bit neater is in cases like this I might set the formatting of the axis labels so that they always, um, sorry, the, the tick labels, so that they always have a particular number of characters. So here for example I might set it to be 0.1f, okay, so, and you can also do something like plus 0.1f so that you always have the same number of characters. You can do the same here on the horizontal. 0.1f. Yep. We can do the same thing over here. I just think that makes it look a bit neater is all. So this one might cause a little bit of trouble because we might run out of room. We'll come to that if we need to. Um, no, it's not too bad. Um, so this one here, see how this axis is sort of running up into close to this one? So it sometimes does this if we have our figure too big. Yep, so that's that looks better. So now we have enough separation there. So just copy those margins over to the other one. Okay, so we want to adjust the location of this. So we can use that on this one as well. Okay, so now we've probably got a bit too much white space at the bottom here. Okay, so that's starting to look 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 reasonable. So yeah, probably do a few more tweaks. I, I, so now you can see we've run into this problem I had before. So now we need to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so now we're running into problems with the size. 
so yeah so it does seem like we wouldn't we won't be able to accommodate this plan with with these particular spacing so let's keep this as it is so there are a few options here so one thing we could do is rotate these so that they're like that um, probably doesn't look look the best um, okay, so what else would could you do so one thing you could do is set them to be fewer but that probably doesn't look great um, so yeah if we were doing this properly I'd probably spend a bit of time working out what the best compromise is there but for now let's just go with with something sparse like that okay so you've made your made your graph so now um, the next thing to do is we can export it so you can either if you're using LaTeX you normally export it as a PDF if you're using Word a bitmap um, and if you're having transparency even in LaTeX it's a good idea to export as a bitmap because um, LaTeX PDFs don't handle transparency very well. Uh, the DPI, so we want to have a high DPI. Um, so I'd probably go with say a thousand, um, and we set the background to be a actual uh, color. Okay. Now we can um, export our figure. So with this high DPI, it'll be a quite a large figure and quite a large file I mean okay and then we can have a look at it um, okay so it didn't export our background properly so let me try that again or I didn't set the background properly um, okay so see how the alpha was at 250 at zero so we want that to be 255 okay so now if we export that again Yeah, that looks better. So now we've got our, our nice figure we can insert into a, uh, our document. Okay, so now let's, I guess, finally just um, let's compare. So now if we insert picture, um, you know, I have souls in a PDF format, so I can't do that. Um, but let's just let's compare them. Okay, so now we've got Sol's figure over here, and we've got our updated figure over here. So now this is this is not to to be over, overly critical on Sol's figure. This is the sort of thing you you get these days from a, a kind of a modern um, graphics package. These sorts of defaults. Um, but at least to me, I, I think that this one looks really quite, quite appreciably um, better. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's a, a bit of a, a quick introduction to, to views. So I like it because, yeah, you can tweak lots of parameters. The, the layout is quite, quite intuitive. Um, and it really, I guess it makes, makes producing really nice looking figures quite, quite straightforward. Probably the trickiest bit is getting the data into the um, program in the right format. So we haven't covered that very much, So, but we can maybe talk about that more um, in person. Okay.